both members of the Democratic presidential ticket focusing on battleground Pennsylvania today, with Senator Kamala Harris conducting some Latino voter outreach in Philadelphia and the former Vice President Joe Biden campaigning close to his hometown of Scranton. Correspondent Jackie Heinrich shows us what they were up to tonight. She's live in Philly. Hey, Jackie. Good evening, Shannon. Well, Joe Biden capped off the Democrats' push in battleground Pennsylvania with a CNN town hall. He touched on a number of points, but the biggest newsmaker was when he walked back statement he made yesterday when he said that his legal team thought he would have authority as president to enact a federal mask mandate through executive order. Tonight, he got a little more specific. Our legal team thinks I can do that based upon the degree to which there is a crisis in those states and how bad things are for the country. I cannot mandate people wearing masks. I would like to see the governors enforce mask wearing, period. I can do that on federal property. As president, I will do that. While Biden took to the airwaves, his running mate, Senator Kamala Harris, took to the streets. First in largely African-American North Philly, a ward that often produces the highest Democratic turnout in the city. She met with black business owners, and later she spoke with Latino community leaders, stopping to answer one question about how Democrats plan to earn the Latino vote. Relevant policy that includes what we need to do on everything from the disparities around health care, as evidenced by COVID and the fact that Latinos in the Hispanic community are three times as likely to contract the disease, twice as likely to die from it. It's about the economy. Part of why I'm here is to support what needs to happen around small businesses. For the first time ever, Hispanics and Latinos are the country's largest minority voting bloc, and Democrats are tailoring outreach in part to displace Puerto Ricans who are eligible to vote as residents of other states. The campaign purchased cell phone data showing 80,000 Hurricane Maria refugees in Pennsylvania, and both Biden and Harris have been reminding them that the, the island is still recovering even three years ago from that storm and both of them blaming President Trump. So if Democrats can turn any number of those 80,000 into voters, that could certainly help them in a state President Trump only won by about 44,000 votes. Shannon. All right, Jackie Heinrich, live in Philly. Thank you so much. So the setup was a new thing. I mean, it's a year of the pandemic, a drive-in town hall meeting. But did we learn anything new from Joe Biden tonight? There is a big difference between people walking, moving along, and people sitting down cheek to jowl. I would like to see the governors enforce mask wearing, period. I can do that on federal property. As president, I will do that. I'm impressed by the head of the CDC now standing up and saying, Mr. President, wearing this mask, wearing this mask is going to save more lives than the vaccine between now and the end of the year. They talked about fracking, minimum wage, all kinds of things. So let's debate the event in Pennsylvania tonight and the state of the race 47 days out with Democratic strategist Kevin Walling and Trump 2020 campaign senior advisor Mercedes Schlapp. Thank you both for being with us. Hey, Shannon. Thank you for having us. Okay, I want to play a little bit of the questions that the president got in his town hall a couple nights ago. If you believe it's the president's responsibility to protect America, why would you downplay a pandemic? Why did you throw vulnerable people like me under the bus? You've coined the phrase, make America great again. Right. When has America been great for African Americans in the ghetto of America? Should pre-existing conditions which Obamacare brought into, uh, brought to fruition be removed? No. Without, please stop and let me finish my question, sir. Okay, so I believe that both of you can be objective. I watched the Joe Biden town hall tonight. (laughs) Did you think it was equivalent? Uh, Mercedes, we'll start with you. And Kevin, keep it objective. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Shannon, I got to tell you something. I mean, when uh, Biden is taking questions from CNN, it's sort of like getting questions from the Democrat National Committee. So let's be real. I mean, it's softball questions. In fact, it's actually kind of surprising that Biden even took questions. We've seen that President Trump has taken five times as many questions from reporters and tough questions, as you know, from your fellow colleagues like Chris Wallace uh, than Joe Biden. So, you know, again, I think Biden 
does not uh, uh, come across being a strong candidate. He keeps flip-flopping on issues like fracking. He doesn't want to give a straight-up answer on uh, these different issues. And he, quite frankly, he even um, lies and misrepresents what the president has done. So, you know, again, I'm, I'm not at all impressed with what Biden did with CNN. And we know that there was plenty of Biden supporters at that CNN town hall. Okay, so Kevin, if you saw both, I mean, what's your take on it? There wasn't a lot of pushback on anything the vice president had to say, and the questions all seemed very friendly. People seemed excited to see him, unlike the people who didn't seem so excited to see the president earlier this week. Yes, and it was definitely a different format for sure. And of course, this president is running as an incumbent, right, and has a record to run on. Uh, and, and has to defend a lot of his policies and, and should be able to take these hard questions. I think to Mercedes' point, if you're complaining about the questions, you're probably losing. Uh, and we'll see just you know, a week and a half from now, our own Chris Wallace on this network is going to host the first presidential debate. And we know Chris well uh, in terms of his interviews with both the former vice president and with the president. Uh, and he pulls no punches. So uh, again, I think you know, what you saw tonight with Joe Biden was a prepared uh, uh, individual ready to lead on day one. Uh, and what you saw last night in Philadelphia with the president was a, a man who uh, can't answer a, a simple question with regards to his health care plan, which we're still waiting for four years down the road. Okay, I know Mercedes is going to want to respond to that, but I want you both to respond to this new report. Um, the, a watchdog group, this is from the Washington Times, reviewed, um, uh, the group reviewed voter records from more than 40 states and found nearly 350,000 dead voters still on the rolls, more than 50,000 people who cast more than one ballot in the 2018 election. Many of those apparent double votes were mail ballots. It's according to the Public Interest Legal Foundation. Uh, get a quick response from both of you on that. We'll start with you, Mercedes. Right. Well, I think this is why uh, our campaign has been very concerned about the sudden changes by Democrats who have been focused on fundamentally changing our voting system, especially in states like Nevada and pushing universal mail-in voting, which we know can cause huge chaos in these states. We know that our local election officials, um, many of them are not are not ready or don't have the capacity to deal with millions of mail-in vote, votes coming in into their districts, into their precincts. And so it becomes a problem. And it's why you've seen me, cases like in the congressional district of New York, where in counting 40,000 yeah, votes, just think about this, it took them weeks. six weeks. So think about the millions yeah. of votes and the fact that you have so many out-of-date addresses and people who have died that uh, are still receiving these live ballots. Okay. Let me get Kevin in for a quick final word. Yeah, Shannon, we knew uh, what was going to happen with COVID back in March and, and April, and Democrats were fighting for additional resources uh, to support secretaries of state just to enhance uh, voting procedures. There is every study in the world that shows that there is no inherent benefit to Democrats or Republicans with regards to mail voting. What this president should have done uh, half a year ago is put more funding behind elections in this country to make sure that they are secure, showing that mail voting does not benefit one political party. If he was smart about this, okay. he would want every Republican to vote by by mail. Okay. Uh, well, I'm you sure, know, it's, I'm sure it's Mercedes safe to wants vote them in all person. to vote just period just in whatever form they do. <laughs> okay. Um, Mercedes right. and Kevin, great to have you both. See you soon. Shannon, good to Thank see you. Thank you. You too.